Today we're diving into a deep and somewhat chilling account of a woman named Elaine. In 1999, Elaine found herself at death's door due to a stroke caused by a brain tumor. For over an hour, she was technically dead and even taken to the morgue. But then, something incredible happened. She came back to life, and she didn't come back empty-handed. She brought with her visions of the future, particularly the decade from 2030 to 2040, and it's not exactly a bed of roses. Elaine's account of her near-death experience, or NDE as it's often called, is pretty detailed. She talks about floating out of her body, meeting loved ones who had passed away, and even this all-encompassing sense of love that's hard to put into words. But the most intriguing part of her story is her visions of the future. According to Elaine, the world as we know it is going to undergo some serious changes. From coasts disappearing underwater, and massive fires scorching the earth to societal chaos causing all sorts of trouble, her visions paint a grim picture of what might be in store for us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and pray for John as he is missing his dog. Elaine suffered a stroke on October 22, 1976, due to a brain tumor, and subsequently experienced a remarkable near-death experience. According to Elaine, this was the most significant and extraordinary event of her life. At the time, she was attending the American Floral Arts School in Chicago, and was only a few days away from completing her studies when she began having seizures. A fellow student called for medical assistance, and Elaine's NDE account and future visions were featured in a television documentary titled Ancient Prophecies. Despite being clinically dead for an hour and taken to the morgue, Elaine miraculously returned to life. During her NDE, she was shown heaven and given a glimpse of the potential consequences of our current actions on this planet. Elaine shares her first-hand account of her NDE in her own words. The first portion of this video will describe Elaine's NDE, and the second portion will go on to describe her prophetic visions of the future. When I got to the hospital, it was not as if I was on the gurney looking up, but I was moving, not necessarily walking, but I was at eye level along the right side of the gurney. And there was my body on it, but I did not have any relationship at all to that body. The next thing that I can remember is running across the fields of grass. There were maybe five or seven people that were there waiting for me, and I realized that one of them was my grandmother, who died when I was nine years old. The other one was my husband's friend Virginia, who had just died the previous February. There was sound in the air that completely defies description. It was as if there were a multitude of voices and a multitude of instruments blended and playing soft music. The twittering of birds, and other beautiful sounds, were all melodically instrumented into the music which wafted through the air. The sounds just flowed into me in a soft, soft manner. Looking about me, I turned toward the right, and I saw a distant light that resembled a bright star. The light began to move toward me at an incredible rate of speed. At the same time, I had a sense of moving toward the light. As the light got closer to me, I realized that it had a personality to it. Love and understanding were emanating from the light. It was the most intense amount of love that you can imagine. It was as though you were in the presence of the one person in your life who had loved you beyond anything, despite what you might have done, and that love was magnified many times. That's how it was, in a way. At that point, the light spoke to me. Only not in languages here on Earth. It spoke to me from everything that it was into everything that I was. I not only heard it, but I understood it with every fiber of my being. There was total communication between that being and my being. I was back in my body with a body slam, and the defibrillators were above me getting ready to jolt me again. They continued to work with me, but when my heart stopped again for the last time, and I was pushed to one side to be prepared for the morgue. Once again, Elaine reported leaving her physical body and entering a spiritual realm of light. I was pulled into billions and billions of diamond-like sparkles and I was one of them. Then, Elaine was shown visions of the future. After she received these visions, she returned to her body and found herself lying in the morgue. Number 1. As the angel pointed in front of me, a wide view of land and water opened up, so that at first I thought I was seeing two countries. Instantly, it was made known to me that I was looking at a vastly changed portion of North America, which was completely divided by a large body of water, and which had lost a large part of both eastern and western shorelines. 
As I saw this, I was given a total understanding of the natural and man-made disasters that would need to occur to make these changes, and I was informed that these might or might not come to pass according to our choices as a people, according to my choices as an individual. Number two, in this scenario, icebergs and polar ice caps were melting, earthquakes had occurred, and there had been hurricanes and fierce storms. The whole country had been ravaged by these things. I could also see massive fires burning here and there, not so much the flames as the smoke that was ascending toward me, as huge areas of the country seemed to be being burned. There were also explosions in some areas, sort of like sheet lightning in a dark sky, that were doing great damage. Where Washington and Oregon had been there were mostly islands, the water coming inland over most of California and Arizona, and parts of Utah and Nevada. Yet there were also islands there, massive ones, so it wasn't like it was all ocean. On the east coast, I saw that much of the eastern seaboard was gone, though the water did not come so far inland as it did on the west coast. I was also aware that the southern half of Florida was underwater. I don't remember seeing anything like Central America or South America, for water surrounded what I was seeing, and I didn't focus on what was beyond that water. Yet, at the same time, I had the understanding that the waters had risen around the entire Earth, and that everything had changed to one degree or another. Number three, the area of water in the middle of the United States was massive and was most extensive in the North. There were no great lakes as I had known them, for all of them had come together into this huge sea that extended northeastward into the ocean. The inland sea also extended southward, filling most of the Mississippi and Missouri River valleys, and widening by many, many miles the Mississippi River, where it flows into what we know as the Gulf of Mexico. This sea was so vast that I knew it could not be bridged, and so in essence the United States had become two separate countries. Number four. I was also aware that the seat of power, or patriotism, had moved away from Washington, D.C. There was so much turmoil and warfare on the eastern side of this body of water that no authority existed there. I understood then that in the scenario I was being shown, our country had come to the very edge of destruction, to the brink of losing everything because myself, and hosts of others like me, had chosen to seek worldly things rather than loving or serving others. Additionally, we had refused to care for our precious natural resources, because of our greed and selfishness, our national government had lost most of its power and could no longer govern or control. National laws were ignored, and there was no true nationwide governmental infrastructure left. What government there was seemed to be territorial, sort of like large tribes or groups of people who had banded together. And I saw that because of the ramifications of these day-to-day -day choices, the people, especially on the eastern side of this new body of water, lived in great danger and fear. There was tremendous anarchy and crime, sort of like the Los Angeles riots spread nationwide. And the normal citizens kept themselves hidden from all this, barricading themselves in their homes or wherever they had gathered together for security. Many children didn't go to school. Commerce as we know it had ceased. Many people were starving to death. And there was terrible violence from people who seemed like roving gangs. It was just an awful scene of confusion and turmoil. Yet in this scenario, there was less of that turmoil in the western portion of our country. There was even a certain amount of prosperity, and it was there that I could see the new seat of power, if that is what it could be called. This area, or city or whatever, while on the eastern edge or shoreline of the western portion of land, was located in almost the exact center of the combination of both halves of the country. Later, when I looked at a map of the United States, I realized that it would have been very near present-day Kansas City. From this location, I could see power radiating outward, almost like light flowing out to strengthen and stabilize other areas. This power was what I called patriotism, or strong moral character, or spirituality. A true spiritual force that was the only real governing power over the whole land. This is why I called that area the seat of power. But I must state this power was totally spiritual. A true power of spirit such as the angel beside me was exhibiting, or that I had felt emanating from Christ while I had been in his presence. Number five. I also sensed that some of the Indians, the Native Americans, were partially responsible for the peacefulness that was on the western side of this water. Some of these Native American peoples had a knowledge of how to live from the land, or how to be in harmony with it, so it would bring forth in abundance according to their needs. 
they were teaching this spiritual knowledge to the people around them. And all the people were starting to learn to live in harmony with each other. At the same time, they were beginning again to prosper by becoming harmonious with nature, or the natural elements upon which they depended.